You are mixing a live show and the singer has too much sibilance in their voice. The S's and T's are just too harsh. So you try to kill the high frequencies with an EQ, but it ends up making the vocal way too muffled like this. And if you don't do anything to it, it's just too painful to listen to. So you start saying to yourself, if only I had a de-esser plugin on my live console. Or maybe you do have one, but it just sounds too bad, so you'd rather not use it at all. At this point, you're thinking to yourself, is there any solution at all to this problem? And there is, but is it sending the signal out of the mixer to a computer that's running a de-esser plugin and then sending it back from the computer to the mixer? No, it's much simpler than this. You just need one empty channel on your console that you're not using. And you know what? I'll show you. Come with me. I'll be using a Midas M32 console for the sake of this video, but just know that what I'm about to explain applies to any kind of console. Even Bob Clear Mountain used to do this on his analog SSL console, so I guess my point is it doesn't matter what you're using, you will still benefit from this. Okay, so I told you a little bit earlier that you needed one extra channel that you're not using. So step number one would be to send the exact same microphone signal to the main channel that will be in the mix and to that extra unused channel. Now, if you're using a Midas M32 like me, you may know that the routing works in groups of eight channels at a time. However, if you're running any version of the firmware above 4.0, there is a way around that. I'll be using channels one and two for the sake of this video. So what we will do is go to the routing menu, then find the first block where it says one to eight and go down to user in one to eight and click on that. Then go to the far right till you find the user tab. And for input one, select card in one. And for input two, select card in one also. And as you can see, the same signal is going through both channels. The reason why I chose the card input is that I'm using a multi-track recording because, well, I don't have someone to sing live for the video. And the recording will make it easier for the comparison, which I'll be doing later in the video. However, if you are in a live show, you will probably be using the local in which is the XLR inputs on the back of the console, or if you're using a stage box, it will be AS50A or B. Okay, so channel one will be the main channel that will go into the mix, but channel two will only be used for the assing, so we don't want to hear it in the mix. So what we will do is we will select channel two, then go to the main stereo button and click it. That will remove it from the main mix, but you can still listen to it with the solo button through your headphones. The next step is to turn on the EQ on the second channel and start looking for the most offending frequency range. In this example, it's around eight kilohertz. So we will boost that and then cut the higher frequencies and cut the lower frequencies to just have that offending frequency. Next, we're gonna unsolo channel 2 and select channel 1. Then we're gonna turn on the compressor on that channel. Then we're gonna look for the block where it says key source on the right, which is basically the same thing as a sidechain. And we're gonna choose channel 2. And what that means is that the compressor that is on channel 1 will not do anything unless there is a signal on channel 2. It is listening to the second channel. So if there's nothing going on on the second channel, the compressor will do nothing. Now we're gonna set the compressor. So what I'm doing here is I'm lowering the threshold, but the numbers here don't really matter because it depends on the level of the signal coming into the compressor. I'm setting the ratio to about seven to one. What's most important is the attack and release times. We want a very fast attack and a very fast release. The minimum here is about five milliseconds with no hold because we want the compressor to grab the signal and release it as fast as possible. You can also set a softer knee. Okay, but what's the idea? Why are we even compressing the vocal? When there is a harsh sibilance, which means the S sound, the S, T, and SH, you just want to turn it down. Yeah, you can use a fancy plugin that finds the specific frequencies, but that's what we're doing right here. The compressor is turning it down when it hears 
the harsh frequency that we selected. Now, if you've ever gone through the built-in effects on the M32 console, you would have seen that there is a de plugin. However, it sounds terrible. And I will show you. I don't know how this will come across YouTube, but I'm gonna try my best to show you and make a comparison between this method and the built-in de -esser. Okay, so I will turn off the compressor on the first channel. Then I will go to the effects menu go to the fifth effect because it's an insert only and then select the dual the asser effect and select channel one so i'm putting that effect on channel one then go to the home page and activate the insert then go back to this effect and turn on the deasing and i've got so much life to live and not just for that mission if i do too much it's too much if i do too little it doesn't grab some parts, it grabs other parts too much. Yeah, it sounds weird. Okay, so now it's time for a quick comparison between the built-in de and the method that I just showed you. Yeah, so much life to live and not just for an mission. And I've got so much life to live and not just for an mission. And I've got so much life to live and not just for an mission. Oh, I almost forgot to mention this. If you want more or less de -essing, you can just turn up or down the gain of that harsh frequency on the EQ of the second channel, or you can turn up or down the threshold of the compressor on the first channel. Finally, if you found this helpful, make sure to give this video a like. It actually makes a difference, and if you already did, then thank you, I really appreciate that. And if you have a sound technician friend who is also running into that problem in live shows, then send them this video. They will thank you for it. And until then, I'll see you in the next video.